Hello everyone, this is Amit. In this video, we'll learn top 10 Notepad++ tips and tricks that you wish you knew before. Now, some of these tips might be familiar to you. If you, if you do, then you can skip that part of the video. So let's get started. On number 10, we have a quick summary of a file. So how can I get a quick summary of the file? Now, let's say you are modifying a, a big file and you would like to know how many characters are there, how many lines are there, how many words are there in that file, uh, this particular feature can come handy. So let me look at this particular file. It's a, it's a plain text file. And I would like to get a quick summary of this. Uh, so I can go to view and go to summary. And as you can see, it gives me the, the name of the file, where is it located, when was it created, when was it modified. It's kind of weird, the, the, the number is different. Um, how many characters are there, words, how many lines, and so on. So this is a pretty neat uh, little feature in Notepad++ that gives you a quick summary. It is similar to like Microsoft Word where you can get a summary of the whole document. Uh, and so that is number 10. Let's go to number 9. Uh, number 9 is how you can set file to read only mode. Now, why do you want to do that? Uh, just assume a scenario where you are modifying a particular file by looking at another reference file. Now, you want to make sure that you don't modify the reference file. Uh, in such case, uh, you can set that file as a read only. So let's go back to our map.txt file. And let's say this is my reference file. I don't want to modify it by mistake. So all I have to do is right click on it. And right here it says read only. And so the moment I click on that, you will see that this will become disabled. So click read only. And as you can see, that any editing of this file is disabled. So even, even if I try to add anything, uh, it would not allow me because it's in a read only mode. So in that way, you can make sure that you don't by mistake modify some kind of a reference file, right? If you want to remove it, you can right click on it and remove the read only mode. And now you can actually add it. Okay, so let's go to number eight. And number eight is how you can show hidden characters or symbols. Now let's go back to our text file. Now there are a number of hidden characters that are in this file such as line feed or the new line characters and so on. And so how can I view these uh, hidden characters or symbols? Uh, so there is an icon which is right on the top. Uh, right here is just uh, show all characters. When I click on that, it'll show all those hidden characters as well. So if I click on that, now you can see that there are a number of characters that are, that are hidden. For example, CR means carriage return, LF means line feed, and that is basically tells the text editor that there is a new line at this point. You can also see, if I zoom it a little bit, uh, there are some arrows here. Uh, it's in a faint orange uh, color. And that basically means tabs. So every time I press tab, it actually adds this line. Now I have a settings where it changes tabs to spaces. That's why it doesn't show. But if you don't have that setting, you will see this arrow uh, as a tab uh, character. And then there are dots here. That Those are basically spaces. So every time I put space, you can see it, put, it puts this uh, orange, kind of hard to see, but these dots. All right, so that's how you can actually show hidden characters or uh, or disable that. So if I click on that again, it'll go away. Now this can be useful if you're doing some kind of a search replace and you're looking for a particular, you know, character. It, it, it's good to know that this feature exists uh, so that you can see if it doesn't behave as you intend to, All right? So show symbols and just remove that. All right, so save. So that is number eight, show hidden characters and symbols. So on number seven, we have a wrap long line using word wrap. Now for that, let's go to this HTML file. And uh, this is just a very simple HTML file. But if you look at some of the, this paragraph tag, the, the lines are pretty long. And so in order to read through this, you have to go left and right, right? You have to scroll. Uh, from left to right in order to read these texts. And so in such cases, doing a word wrap can become handy. And so in order to wrap, you can actually go to, I think, view 
and word wrap or there is also a, a shortcut icon right here uh, right next to all show all symbols right here it says word wrap as you can see and when I click on that it'll wrap these long lines uh, so that we can see it entirely in this uh, view so if I go here click on this now you can see it is nicely just wrap this long line it it is not putting it into multiple lines because if you look at the line numbers here line number is still seven right and then the next line is number eight it just wrapped this long text so that it is easy to read through it if I click on that again you'll see that it'll be extended as it was before right and so word wrap is a pretty common feature in most text editors and it can come pretty handy when you have these files which are pretty long uh, left to right All right so that is number seven uh, you can use word wrap to wrap long lines on number six we have a feature when you would like to remove empty lines with a single click so let's say we go back to our text here uh, and let's say you know you have number of extra empty lines here right but uh, as you work on different uh, different files you end up usually have some kind of empty lines and it doesn't look good if what if you would like to remove these empty lines and so there is a, just a single click option to remove all the empty lines in order to do that you have to go to edit go to line operations and right here it says remove empty lines now there are two options so let's try the very first one and interestingly what happened was it didn't remove all these blank lines here right and the reason being if I click on this show all symbols that we just looked uh, a while ago there are some spaces as you can see and there are some tabs and so that is the reason why it was not fully empty or blank lines so let's remove this so is there a way to remove these empty lines which have some hidden characters so there is another option right there if you go to edit go to line feed and right here next to the remove empty line there is a remove empty line containing blank characters so if I click on that you will see that all these lines that doesn't have any text in it will be also removed so go to edit line operations remove empty line containing blank characters and there you go and I'm going to do wrap also word wrap which uh, actually is already enabled and now you can see that I was able to remove all the empty or blank lines with just a click of a button if you remember it was like this before and after removing it looks like this right so let's save this so that is number six removing empty line with a single click Hello everyone, let me just take a quick 5 second break from the video. If you like the content of this video, then please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new Notepad++ videos every week and there are a number of playlists that you can check it out. So make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to get the notification of the new videos. Now let's continue. On number 5, we have a feature uh, to temporarily hide lines. So let's go back to one of these files. Let's go back here or maybe in this file. And let's say I'm working on a two section of the same file. And there is some text in between. Uh, but in order to add it, I have to always, you know, scroll up and down in order to make those, you know, add it those two different sections. So there is a feature in which you can hide lines uh, and so that it's easier to, you know, work with the two different sections of the same file. So let's, for example, I, I'm not interested in this part of the code or a, a document. And so I can right click on it and I can click hide lines. And the moment I click hide lines, you will see there is an arrow that shows up right here. So I'm going to click that. And as you can see, it's, it basically means that there, there are some hidden lines. It are, uh, they are there. It just doesn't show. So it's, for example, if I'm working on this part and somewhere here, I can remove all, not remove, but I can hide all the in-between lines by selecting those lines, right-clicking, and hide lines. And now I can easily, you know, work on two different sections uh, fairly easily. Now, if I want to remove it, all I have to do is click on these arrows, and then that will remove the hide lines. So if I click on that, as you can see, it's gone. 
if I click on this one, it will also be back to how it was before. So this is pretty neat little uh, feature where you would like to temporarily just hide some lines so that you can easily move uh, uh, in your file. All right. So on number four, we have dual views. Now, so far we have been working on different files with the same single big view. But often, you know, you're, you are working with multiple files and it would be nice if you can put it side by side so that you can look at one of the, the reference file and then add it the other one, right? So in such cases, let's say I would like to move this in a dual view. I can right click on this file and all I have to is just say move other to other view. And now you can see it is able to uh, have these two side by side line views uh, and so that I can add this file while looking at this or, or vice versa, right? So very easily you can see multiple views using this dual view feature. What if I want to remove this? And so in, in that case, you just select and then just drag it on the, the main screen here. And now you can see it's gone. So again, right click, move to other view. In fact, you can even clone this. So let's clone this time. And now you can see there is the same file, but it is cloned here. If I want to remove this, I can just select by the tab and then drag it and leave it and then it's gone. So that is number four, dual view. Number three is changing text to upper or lower case or a proper case. So let's go back here again. Now, there might be a time when you're working with a particular piece of code that you would like to change it to uppercase or lowercase. So let's go back here. And let's say I would like to change this to uppercase. I can select the text, right click on it, and just click uppercase. And as you can see, it changed to uppercase. If I want to change it to lowercase, same thing. I can select all these files or all the text that I want, right click, change it to lowercase. Now there is another, another feature which is called proper case. Now proper case is when each word, the first character of each word is, is a change to uppercase. So if you have a title, for example, where often people like to have the very first character of each word, you know, in a, in uppercase, uh, this feature can come handy. So for example, let's take a, this, this text, I'm going to put it into another file. And if I want to change this to a proper case, I can go to edit. I can go to convert cases. Now, those upper and lower cases are already here, but then there is this called proper case. So if I click on that, you'll see what happens. As you can see, it was something like this before, where all the first characters of these words were lower case. Maybe there were some mixed cases also. But when, you, when I use for proper case, it changes Oops, I need to select, go here and proper case. You can see the first letter of each word is uh, now in uppercase. And so that is what we just looked. Uh, very easily change the text to uppercase or lowercase or a proper case. So we have two more. Uh, the number two is change text fonts. Now, most people don't change their fonts quite often, but there might be a time where you would like to customize your font selection, right? And so in that way, let's say I would like to change the fonts. Usually by default, it is set to Courier New, which is a monospace fonts. By the way, if you would like to learn more about fonts, I have a separate video uh, on the font. So please do search on my channel. But let's say I would like to change the font. So I can go to settings. I can go to style configurator. And here I have a selection of all the fonts. Again, went to settings, style configurator, and make sure that you enable global font. Otherwise it may not work, but you enable, check this box. And now you can change uh, your fonts to any of these fonts that are available in your Windows environment. Now, one thing to be uh, aware of is the Notepad++ is usually source code editor, and it, it prefers to have a monospace font. A monospace font is basically each character or letter have same width. And so let's change it to Courier New. And you can see it changed the font to Courier New. 
another very popular font uh, on Windows is Console S, right here. And that is also a monospace font, which is pretty popular in many text editors. Uh, even Visual Studio probably, I think, has this as a default. So Consolas or Courier New or there are a bunch of uh, monospace fonts out there uh, that you can download and install. But this is how you can change the font. Uh, just make sure you enable global font. And from your drop down, you pick the, the, the fonts that you are interested. Right. So that is number two. And finally, number one is how can you change colors using Notepad++ themes? Now, uh, Notepad++ comes with many very interesting themes that can customize how your text editor will look like. And so the way in which you can change these themes is again go to settings, go to style configurator, and right on the top here says select theme. So the default is just a white background, uh, black, you know, uh, text for just a text file or if there's an HTML, there's a special color uh, scheme for the different tags. So I can click on that and let's say I try a black, deep black. All right, and as you can see, it actually changed the theme to a nice black background, white uh, text, and then other text colors and so on. So if you like a dark mode, by the way, I have a separate video on the dark themes uh, in Notepad++, so please do check that. But this one allows you to change different themes. So let's go back, go to preferences. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Go to settings, style configurator. And let's change it to Zen Burn, which is a pretty neat uh, theme. So it's a little lighter than fully black, but it's, it's it gives a nice feel to it. So if you're working on your computer for a long time in a little darker environment, you know, dark themes can be handy. And so, as you can see, it changed for all the, the files that were open using this theme. So again, this is a very neat feature, uh, the themes in Notepad++ that allows you to change colors uh, and text background and so on and the style and everything. And so we just learned top 10 tips and tricks in Notepad++ that allows you to use Notepad++ more efficiently. So I hope you use these tips. If you like this video, please click on the like button and do check my channel. I post new videos about Notepad++ almost every week and I have a, a large collection of different features videos and so make sure you check that out and if you like this channel please click on the subscribe button all right thank you very much